recognizable of the decade. Perhaps her moment of fame began with this Johnny Versace dress, loosely held together by safety pins. She wore it to the London premiere of her boyfriend Hugh Grant's film, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Hugh Grant and Elizabeth Hurley instantly became one of the world's hottest and most photographed couples. Creí que solo quería ser actriz. Voy a tener un hijo suyo, Milar. They first bueno. met on the set of a Spanish movie called Rowing with the Wind. Bueno. Grant, then 26, played Lord Byron. Hurley, 21, played one of Byron's mistresses. The beastly boy has arrived. The couple has been together ever since. <laughs> Hurley is even head of their newly formed production company. Grant had called her his soulmate, and she had declared that she was always faithful to him despite their long separations. Then there was the incident. Hugh Grant was arrested for lewd conduct with a prostitute named Divine in his car parked on Hollywood Sunset Boulevard. The episode changed life totally for Grant and Hurley. In spite of the fact that the press has been virtually camping out on her doorstep and watching her every move, very little is known about Elizabeth Hurley. Up until now, she's appeared in a dozen movies, mostly forgettable, but she did win good reviews for this BBC production of Christabel. I didn't know what to say to you, what to say. Americans may remember her as the flight attendant turned terrorist in the hit film Passenger 57. Now the movie offers are pouring in. You look wonderful. Thank are you, you exhausted? When Elizabeth Hurley arrived for our interview, she was alone. There was no entourage. Charles Dickens could have written these lines about Elizabeth Hurley. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I asked the Estee a lot of people why they chose you. And I said, were you looking for an all-American image? And they said, no, no. We were looking for, I wrote it down, the sophisticated woman of the 21st century. Well, How do you like that? I'll take that on the chin. Mm -hmm. um, very nice. I, I, I've never felt one jot sophisticated. I can be reduced to feeling like a very scruffy schoolgirl in two seconds flat by most people. But um, by the time they've done their retouching and their lighting, maybe I can look sophisticated. Mm -hmm. I like that. When you were a teenager from 17 to 19, you did not look like this. Tell me what you looked like. I think my mother would say I looked a perfect fright. She hated it. I had a nose ring. I ring had, through your nose. I had 16 earrings. I had um, white hair, pink hair, blue hair. Teenage things. Punk. You know? Punk yeah. kid. Punk. English punk kid. Yeah. I think any teenager worth their salt has a bit of rebellion in them. Something intrigued me. You recently registered in the hotel under an assumed name. The name is Rebecca De Winter. Now, I remember the film, <laughs> Rebecca, by Daphne du Maurier. Rebecca never appeared. She was mysterious, beautiful, and evil. Why did you pick that name? Rebecca is, um, we start off thinking she's an angel. Mm -hmm. And, um, in fact, we find out she's an incredibly unpleasant person. Very manipulative. I just love the name. You know, the house is Manderley. That's and right. the first line of the book is, last night I dreamt I went to Manderley again. I dream every night I wake up in Manderley. That's what I want. So what, I guess Rebecca that's what you, you want to wake up in a beautiful mansion. By the sea. But is that how you see yourself? I don't know if I do anymore. Um, I don't know anymore. <laughs> it's hard now to know what, what you are, what you'll be. It is, isn't it? And I think I realize as you get older, everything does get hazier and hazier. I was assumed everything falls into place. Maybe it will. Maybe. Everybody I meet as they get older, so they get more and more confused. And now you have a new film. Tell me about the new film. Well, I'm going to South Africa next week with um, Ice Cube. The rapper. Yeah. It's not a typical film to come out of South Africa. It's not about apartheid. It's not about problems within black and white society in South Africa. Does the Estee Lauder Company care at all what kind of films you make? Do they worry that it might be against the image that you're projecting? No, they want me to do anything which would help further myself and my career. You know, and, and by doing so, of course, it's, it's, it's good for the image of the company. Were they supportive throughout the last months? 
Is there ever a question of don't see Hugh Grant or maybe you should do this? And no, and nothing can be further from the truth. They've, they've been superb, really superb. Um, they've become like family to me now. Let's go back to happy days. When you met Hugh Grant, when you were in that early film together, was it love at first sight? Did you think he was terrific? Do you um, remember what you thought? <laughs> I think we're both astounded by our similarities in some ways. Both physical, we look quite similar. And um, we had a very similar upbringing. Quite frighteningly similar, in fact. In what way? Both our, both our fathers were retired army officers. Both our mothers, school teachers, specialising in the piano. None of us come from families which have much money. Both of us come from families which have a lot of love. Um, both our parents, are, both sets of parents are still together. I mean, I've always said I don't have anyone to blame for anything. You know, I, I take full responsibility for everything I've ever done because um, my parents have been blameless bringing us up. The most unselfish, the best people on earth. So is this what attracted you? That the two of you had similar backgrounds? <laughs> I remember thinking he looked quite nice in his costume at the time. We got on very well. Was it a romance? Is it a romance? Well, well you know, present tense is a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't know which... Uh, let's <laughs> go past. Was it a romance? I think yes, definitely. I sort of feel he's my family. I, you know, I think blood is very thick. It certainly is in my family. And I felt that we'd moved to that stage where, um, you know, you, you couldn't... You're very um, at home with each other. Did you think of marriage? No, actually, we never did. We started going out when I was 21, when, of course, you wouldn't begin to think about getting married. And um, mentally, I don't think I've moved on at all from then. Mm. Well, I actually find it quite bizarre now. I mean, some, I'm sure, very well-meaning people have said to me now, um, you should just get married. I'm like... That's the most bizarre thing I've ever oh, heard in my life. You should just get married. No. And, that, and that would say, that takes yeah. care of everything. Just get married. And, yeah, and I'm like, well, yeah. you know. Put a stop to it. Just get married. There's never been a time in my life where I felt less inclined to get married. So, um, you know, that doesn't go down too well. Was all this a terrible surprise? Yes. Do you have any idea why, you know, there's been all of this psychological what if, what is, or was it just some, I don't know what, wild, stupid thing? Well, I, I think that most things you do in life, you do because you want to. And I always think that is the bottom line. Um, yes, there's all sort of psycho babble you can come up with. I think ultimately you want to do something and you do it. How did you hear about it? Um, my agent told me. Before you talk to, even talked to him? You Seconds were... before. Oh, Lord, what did you say? What did he say? Well, I, I think I, I felt like I'd been shot. I, mean, I, was in, I think I was in shock. There were the pictures of you arguing in the garden, looking very angry. And some people wondered, why on earth did you do it in a garden? When you knew they were photographers, or was that on purpose? Was well, that to show that you were angry? No, the, 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 at that stage, the only thing I was angry was the fact that I had 350 paparazzi people with long lenses trained into every single room in my house. You know, it's the hottest day of the year. Um, they even had cameras aimed into the bathroom, so curtains had to be drawn. You know, we don't have such things, air conditioning in England. I wanted to get outside. We weren't arguing at all. I was just thinking, Jesus Christ, I can't even walk to my greenhouse to water my tomato plants without some jerk at the end of the garden with a camera on me. That's actually what was annoying me. And in the middle of it all, a mattress was delivered. Well, that was bizarre. I mean, yeah, Will you explain that, please? Yes. The morning before I got my horrible telephone call, I'd invited some people to stay for the weekend, and I needed a bed for our spare bedroom, so I rang and ordered one. And then I went out for lunch, and then I came back, and I, of course, everything exploded. That's why. <laughs> Where are you now? I mean, once and for all, I guess you're going to have to answer it, and then we hope you don't have to again, but, but where is it, and where are you in, in your head with him? Well, I don't know, really. I'd like to say that everything's getting easier and easier and falling into place, but it isn't really. Um, well, um, I don't know. I mean, I think always the deciding thing 
I keep saying to myself is, what if instead the telephone call had been, he's been killed in a car crash? And you know, that's 10 billion times worse. In a car crash, he would be gone forever. Yeah, and there's no embarrassment. There's only sympathy and love left. Yeah, I've lost the rest of my life. So, um, you know, I don't have that. So, I don't know really. I'm really looking forward to going away to South Africa. How long will you be away? I'm away for about seven weeks. So you won't be seeing him for seven weeks? Oh, well, I don't know. He'll probably come out for a while. Um, I do quite feel, it's very, very difficult in England at the moment. I mean, it's, it's, it, I mean, it's actually intolerable to not, to, um, you know, to be on display mm. all the time. Is there an explanation? I mean, can he say something where you would say, yes, I understand, I can forgive that? I don't think it's a question of understanding. And, um... Is it forgiving? Well, you know, forgiving... It's, it's... You know, it's very... Forgiveness is a very difficult subject. But that's something, you know, that has to be worked out. It would be very easy now to become very hard. And say never again. Oh, yeah. yeah. You went to the opening of nine months with Hugh Grant, which was, at least to the world, a way of saying, I still support you. You didn't look very happy. <laughs> no, I was miserable as sin. But you went. Yeah, I went. So that's an act of what? Well, I did, you know, I... I don't think you should hit someone when they're down. I've never thought that. What did your parents say about all of this? Uh, well, that, that's, you know, that's a tough one. Um, well, I think, you know, Dad's initial reaction was that he should be horsewhipped, <laughs> like any good father should be. Um, it, it's, it's very hard for them, of course, you know, because they've loved him for a long time, but they love me more. You're a very honest lady. Have you always been like this? I'd love to be able to lie. I'd, I'd love it. Um, I'm not very good at it. I can never be bothered to think of anything to say which isn't the truth. I've always found it easier just to tell the truth. So where do you go from here? I don't know. I don't really know, to be quite honest. Um, I don't know.